Pero eso no está. Eso... Bueno, pues ya está.
Good evening. Who's hosting? Hello? So we're almost ready. Thanks. How are you? Welcome. Try to look at new faces. Ozzy, old friend Nancy. Long time no see. Um, Ellie, Superintendent Miller. Jocelyn, where are you hiding? I don't know why. Jumina, Lieutenant Garcia from the 33rd. Who else? CO Castillo, new kid on the block. Uh, who else? Chanel, there's probably not a few. It's only about, it's only a, about few. a few board members. Board members. I don't think we have a quorum. Chanel, how, how many board members do we have? You have nine, so you need five. How many? Five. We have five already. Um, no, you have three. Three. Well, we don't need quorum because we're not voting on any resolutions. And I think it's extremely important that we Start on time and make it out of here on time. Here's, hey, Anne. Mary. Hey, Mary, can you unmute yourself? There you go, good. So it's 712, uh, we are gonna be filling in the gap until we have a, a really a volunteer come in, step, fill in, try and fill in the shoes of being a chairperson for this committee. Uh, it's an important committee uh, because it involves something that is Nowadays, probably the one and only ask that's common amongst mostly every community resident, which is public safety. So I believe that we have enough people in this room that can uh, talk about uh, some, of the, some of the realities and some of the solutions that they may or may not have at this point uh, as part of you know, their agenda uh, to try and make this this neighborhood are more, more peaceful than, than, than what it should be. Uh, so I'm gonna start right off the bat and introduce you the new CEO of the 34th prison, Castillo, whom I met, Aneudi, Aneudi, Aneudi I think, Aneudi Castillo, whom I met. Uh, uh, his vision is uh, fantastic, broad, and very inclusive. Uh, so I'm gonna not say more about him and get him started. CEO Castillo. Mm. Thank you, Leosan. Um, good evening, everyone. Hope everyone had a nice summer. Thank you for having me. My name is Daniel Di Castillo. I'm the newly appointed commanding officer of the 34th Precinct. I've been here about a month and a half, close to two months now. Um, as Eliasad mentioned, um, I'm not going to get too much into my, my, um, my thinking and my crime fighting strategy, my strategy going forward with the, uh, with the 34th Precinct. But in general, um, Obviously, we're data-driven organization in the NYPD, so that's important. Um, the data that we get, we analyze it, and we make decisions on deployment to prevent crime, obviously, and, and quality life offenses. But I like to take a more personal approach. I get out there a lot and kind of see it with my own two eyes. Um, I believe in using discretion where it's appropriate. Um, so as we move forward, I'll, obviously, I'll take some of your questions, but just keep that in mind that 
I don't like to make blanket strategies. Um, for instance, I don't like to just tell my cops to go out there and summons everyone that's double parked or summons everyone that's creating uh, some kind of noise issue. Um, I like to kind of take an approach where warnings are, are given out and then depending on the individual and whether they are to those warnings, then we, we might step it up to enforcement, but we can we can talk about those things on a, on a case-by-case basis. But for now, I'll give you the uh, crime statistics for the 28-day period. As you know, we track, uh, we track all crimes, but we specifically focus in on the seven major crime categories for the uh, for the crime uh, report. So those are murder, rape, robbery, felony assault, burglary, grand larceny, grand larceny auto. For the 28 day period, we're down 11%, 117 to 132 total um, for those seven crime categories. So we're doing well in that regard. However, we are up in a couple of categories, which I'll get into. So for murder, we're even at one and one. That murder occurred on August 13th. It was a fatal shooting. Uh, a uh, teenager, unfortunately. Um, he was riding his bicycle over on 10th Avenue. Um, according to the story he gave us before he passed away, unfortunately, he was riding his bike. He hears some gunshots. He gets shot once in his leg. Um, my units respond. They apply the tourniquet to his leg, transport him to Harlem Hospital. Unfortunately, that's where uh, he expired. Um, the squad began their investigation, and we've learned that about a couple of months ago, he was in a fist fight with a group of individuals. And then a week prior to him getting shot, he was robbed by those same individuals. So that evening, our theory right now is that he went over to Dykeman houses. It was Dykeman family day that day. So he expected for a lot of people to be out, potentially the people who had robbed him. Um, he went there to confront them. There was some sort of altercation. He ended up fleeing from the scene and unfortunately he was shot in the process. Um, we have persons of interest in the investigation. However, we have not made any arrests as of yet. Um, it's going to take some time to get probable cause so that we can make that arrest. So that's the one murder for the 28 day period. We have three rapes. I don't like to, to get too specific into the rape incidents for <laughs> privacy reasons, but uh, two are domestic and one is not. And we made an arrest on one of those incidents. Um, where we're really um, struggling is robberies. We've been struggling all year with robberies and the 28 day period hasn't been any different. We're up 27 versus nine. So that's an increase of 200%. Um, specifically gunpoint robberies for jewelry. That's where we're struggling with our robberies. Um, these individuals are, st are targeting people wearing uh, gold chains around their necks and they're robbing them at gunpoint. So we have two separate things going on. One is a citywide pattern, citywide pattern 82 which involves two individuals on a moped, robbing individuals of, of jewelry at gunpoint. And most of those occurred during the daytime, believe it or not, um, specifically between the hours of 2 p.m. to like 4.45 p.m. Um, we made one arrest this past Friday in regard to that pattern. Um, and I think that that person was the main driver of, of these robberies. So I expect it to die down. We've gotten additional personnel from both Patrol Bourbon Manhattan North and downtown at One Police Plaza, uh, in excess of 50 cops on a daily basis to combat this robbery issue. And we've deployed them in the uh, locations where we've been taking those robberies. So that's helped. Last week, we only took one robbery. This week, we've only taken one thus far as well, and none of that gunpoint uh, jewelry variety. Um, so we have that issue going on. Then we have in the evening or early morning hours, we have people targeting uh, individuals exiting bars, nightclubs, for the same reason, wearing jewelry, um, watches, gold chains, and they're robbing them at gunpoint as well. But in these incidents, they're using vehicles. Um, we believe the perpetrators are coming from the Bronx, and we know that just by tracking their vehicles back to the Bronx post-robbery. Um, for that, those particular robberies, uh, we have made one arrest. Uh, it was a juvenile who was involved in two robberies in one night. Um, and then we have some persons of interest for the other robberies, but no arrest on those yet. So that's the issue with the robberies. As, as I mentioned, we get a lot of additional personnel and it seems to be dying down a bit. Hope to keep that up. Uh, changed the uh, schedule for a couple of my specialty units to help combat that. Uh, it's been successful thus far and we'll continue to obviously monitor it and analyze it. Felony assaults were down one, 27 versus 28. Um, 12 of the 27 are domestic in nature. We've made 14 arrests of those 27 incidents. 
For burglaries, we're up 13 versus 11. The bulk of those rob uh, burglaries are occurring um, between 179 and like 183 Street, uh, mostly on the uh, west side of the precinct, Sector Boy. Uh, we've made two arrests and we have one, uh, what we call probable cause I-card, meaning we know who the perpetrator is, it's just a matter of apprehending them in those 13 incidents. I um, mean, those are kind of split uh, between residential and commercial. Uh, we have 30 grand losses compared to 55 last year. So we're doing very well in that department. We're down 45%. And we're also doing pretty well in grand larceny autos. Uh, we're down 16 versus 26. Um, however, we're still having an issue with people leaving their cars running, um, leaving their keys in the car or having their key fob on their person, but being very close to the vehicle. As you know, if you leave the car on, and you, ha you can have the key fob on you, but if you're close to the vehicle, someone can jump in the car and, and take off. So we've had a lot of those incidents, usually later in, in the evening when people are going to get food after being out at, at a nightclub or at a bar. They'll stop at one of these restaurants, uh, double park, leave the key in the car, leave the car running, and then people are taking off in them. Most of these vehicles are being recovered in the Bronx as well. Um, so that's... Uh, one thing I failed to mention, we took an additional shooting, which was not fatal in the 28 day period. And that was on August 29th. With that one, individual states, he's going over to Floridita restaurant over on 10th Avenue. He looks in the restaurant. He says it's very crowded. He decides not to go inside the restaurant. As he's going back to his vehicle, he notices a friend of his who's involved in a uh, verbal dispute with um, a person who's in a black SUV. He goes over to kind of pull his friend away from the dispute and he hears a gunshot and he's struck. So we don't believe he was the in intended target on that shooting. Um, we have since identified his friend who has an extensive criminal history. Um, we're looking to get in contact with him to interview him to figure out what the dispute was about and then kind of figure out what the motive was regarding that shooting. But we know there was a black SUV involved that fled also surprisingly to the Bronx. Um, and we're just looking to identify the vehicle and its occupants. Um, so that's the second shooting we took on it. That one, thank God, was not fatal. But overall, for the year, we're doing very well in shootings. We're down 42%, and we're down in shots fired as well. Um, I understand that uh, traditionally they give reports on the amount of emotionally disturbed person calls we take um, during the 28-day period on this call. So I'll give you that now. We've taken 146 total uh, for the 28-day period um, for calls for emotionally disturbed persons. With regard to animal, animal abuse, we've taken seven 311 calls. Referrals have been made to ASPCA on all seven. And then we've taken three 911 calls, uh, which were dog related. And we were able to speak to the owners of those dogs and they were all unfounded complaints. Um, and in addition to that, finally, we've taken 138 uh, fire uh, calls and none were suspicious. So that's my report. I'll take any questions if anyone has. Ozzy, first hand up. Okay, yes. Hi, thank you. Um, my question in regards to the uh, murder, my understanding is that the individual that was shot um, was uh, taken to the Allen Hospital. Allen Hospital does not have a trauma center, so I wonder who make the determination and why he was taking to Allen? He wasn't taking to Allen, he was taking to Harlem. And uh, normally EMS makes that determination as to where they're taking. Okay. All right, thank you. No problem. Uh, any questions? CEO Castillo, I, I have a question of my own. Uh, is there a difference between uh, stats difference between robberies, residential versus commercial? Is there a percentage number to this? I, I don't have that percentage number for you now. I can get that for you. But just in general, we, we haven't taken any uh, commercial robberies in this 28 day period. They're all or mostly are street robberies. And the ones that aren't are domestic. The ones that are indoors are domestic in nature. That's too good. Is there anything that you would like to share with us as far as uh, piggyback off of the conversation that we had on your vision on you know, uh, uh, prevention policing? 
uh, your approach to how you're going to handle uh, a policing that can be more in sync with the community and what's going on. Sure. So obviously, meetings like this is very important to me because I get to hear from the community and hear specifically uh, what your concerns are. Um, obviously, statistics don't tell the whole story, so we can you know read the, the crimes and analyze the crimes, but there's things that you can tell me that I'm not aware of potentially, um, issues that are concerning you that I, I obviously am here to address. But in general, my philosophy is I like to, to, as much as I can, I like to take things on a case-by-case -case basis. So I know that, mm -hmm. for instance, noise is a big issue in this, in this uh, community, or noise complaints. Uh, we have by far the highest number of 311 complaints regarding noise in, the, in Petroborough, Manhattan North. And I think we're only, we're like fifth in the city. So we get a lot of complaints, uh, 311 complaints, and specifically about noise. When it comes to that, again, I like to play it on a case-by-case -case basis. I go to a lot of these jobs myself personally, so I can get a, a bird's eye view as to what's going on. Um, listen, if it's a family out on a summer night, it's not too late, and they're playing music loudly, I like to take the approach that I warned them. I asked them to please comply and lower the music. From what I've noticed from being out there, people comply. You know, they lower the noise. They don't give you an issue. Um, on the rare occasion, and it has happened with me, where I do warn someone and they don't lower the music, um, you know, I come back and then they blast the music again, then I'll issue a summons. But I don't like that to be my first approach. Um, I don't want us, the police department, to be, you know, like an occupying army. I want to be here and cooperate and work with the community. I don't want to come here and, you know, try to punish people for things that are, have been going on in this community for, you know, decades. Um, and that granted people are complaining. So it is bothering someone. I have to take everyone into approach. So I have to take the complainant, the person who called 311, I have to take them into consideration, but I also have to take the people who are out there just trying to enjoy themselves into consideration as well. So uh, again, that's why we say is the noise unreasonable. If it's unreasonable, we will address it as best we can. If it's not unreasonable, I'm more than willing to sit down with the 311 complainant, 911 complainant. A lot of times, unfortunately, they call and it's anonymous, so I don't have that opportunity. But that's, I'm big on honesty, transparency. I'm always going to tell you what I can do. And I'll be honest as with regard to what I cannot do or what I will need your help in doing. Um, and obviously, I want, to, I want to involve everyone in the community and other city agencies to help us out with a lot of these quality of life issues because uh, we can't always address it on our own, um, you know, drug use in the streets. Obviously that's been sort of decriminalized over the last several years. So I can deploy my cops there and I can ask them to stop. And from time to time, if it's appropriate, we can make arrests. Um, but we all know that's not gonna solve the issue. So we need other city agencies to kind of pitch in and help us out. Um, so I, I'm here to be collaborative. I'm here to be communicative. I wanna you know, be part of this community and, and solve the issues that we have as best we can, but again, my first approach is never going to be heavy handed. I want to kind of take an approach where uh, we try to understand what's going on. Um, we lay out the groundwork for how we expect things to go moving forward. And then we'll take it from there. We'll reanalyze and we'll, we'll readjust where we need to. But um, that's that, my basic approach. But, you know, I can speak more specifically to your specific complaints if, you know, if they come up. There's a question on the Q&A. Oh, sorry, Nancy. Uh, in reference to uh, every... Uh, drug dealer, what's, what's your vision in regards of uh, mitigating the drug dealing in about every corner? I know that there was about 40 something arrest in the Audubon Strip between 178th to 183rd Street. Is that something that you guys will continue on? That's a question from the Q&A from a lady called named Sonia Harrison, I think is her last name. Yes, yeah, so since I've been here, they've had three takedowns of you know, gang members who are also drug dealers. Um, you know, they've arrested over 20 individuals, um, taking them off, off the street for drug dealing. Um, in addition to that, obviously we make arrests on a street level. Um, with regard to marijuana, I know you, you guys see the, the marijuana signs out there. Um, unfortunately, I don't want to say our hands are tied, but that's a, a trickier situation. So what we typically do is obviously we'll approach the, the marijuana set um, with regard to the sign, no one claims the sign. We can't issue them summons. Uh, we have to identify who the owner of the sign is. Nine times out of 10, they're not going to volunteer and say that's their sign. 
So what we do is we take the sign, we voucher the sign. If there's narcotics in open view, we take the narcotics and we voucher that as well. We've made arrests uh, with regard to drugs, narcotic sales um, involving marijuana. Um, it's hit or miss whether the DA's office actually prosecutes and mostly miss, to be honest. They don't really prosecute marijuana sales um, anymore. So that's a, that's a very difficult situation. Obviously, we'll keep, continue to monitor it and we'll make it as uncomfortable for them as possible. Um, with regard to the harder drugs, the cocaine, the heroin, we will make arrests on the street level, but that really, for that problem to be solved, it takes a longer period of time. We involve our narcotics division. They introduce undercover officers who make undercover buys, and then they get the weight up to a level where it becomes um, fruitful for us to actually arrest them and keep them in jail. Because if we make a street level narcotics arrest, in all honesty, they're going to be out the same day. We're going to have to give them a desk appearance ticket. Um, so that's not really going to solve the problem. We will do that. Obviously, as I mentioned, I want to make it as uncomfortable for them as possible. But in order to really see some progress, we need to involve the narcotics division. They need to build a case that takes months. Um, so you're not going to see the results that you want to see right away. Um, but eventually you will see it. And obviously you've seen it already because, as I mentioned, they They've taken down 20 or so crew members who are also uh, narcotics dealers, and that's really going to make a big dent into this, into this issue. Nancy? No, yeah. Hi, thank you. Um, and a pleasure to meet you, Inspector Castillo, and I really appreciate your detailed uh, responses to everything. Thank you. Um, and so uh, I'm a uh, founder of the Tenants Association, Lower Seaman Tenants Association, which is one through 19 Seaman Avenue, also moving forward to Nidos. And so the concerns I'm hearing from the community in, in public safety is um, really pedestrian public safety with uh, the way cars are driving and other vehicles on and off the sidewalks and you know not obeying laws. And a real fear, especially for children and elderly, kind of our most vulnerable. Um, and then also still the fear of, you know, the robberies and what's going on. And people are, especially the elderly, are afraid to come out after dark, you know, and kind of gear their lives around that. Because, you know, if you get knocked over when you're elderly, it becomes a very different situation of recovery. And then one last thing, there was... Um, there was an action where a lot of officers were in front of Rite Aid and PJ Wine last week. Um, and someone had sent a, a picture of that and they were kind of wondering what that was about. Um, and maybe you can explain a little bit more on that. Thank you. Sure. So the cops you saw in front of PJ Wine, that's what that's the additional personnel that I mentioned earlier that the borough and downtown has given us for the robbery issue. So that's really just our meeting point. If you see the big NYPD vehicle out there, we all meet there in the beginning of the day. We give them their assignments and they get, they, they get deployed from that location. So that's why you're seeing the additional officers there. Um, with regard to the robbery problem, I spoke about it earlier. We're getting a lot of additional personnel. It's been very successful thus far. Um, we're going to continue it going forward. Um, luckily, they're not targeting el the elderly uh, population. They're really trying to target the individuals who are wearing the expensive gold chains. That's almost strictly what they're going for. Um, that being said, that's still an issue. So, you know, I plan on using the additional personnel as best we can to kind of deal with that issue. And as I mentioned, it has been successful so, so far. So I continue, I, I expect it to continue. With regard to pedestrian safety, I, I see it. It definitely is a problem. Um, it, we are up across the board with regard to moving violation summonses um, for the year to date and for the 28 day period. In addition to that, we really stepped up our checkpoints along the bridges and within the precinct as well. Uh, for the 28 day period, we have 11 checkpoints and we stopped over close to 300 cars and issued uh, over 200 summonses. So we're trying to get um, some bank for our buck there. And then obviously I'm gonna ask my cops to step up their enforcement with regard to vehicle infractions. Um, that's something that if I'm being honest, we can do a better job of. And I'm gonna really push that forward um, for my cops, for my bosses to really step up their vehicle enforcement. But we're doing our part. I mean, the dirt, dirt bikes, I'm sure you see them out there as well. We really stepped up our seizures with regard to that. We have over 125 seizures of mopeds and dirt bikes this year. And when I got here, we only had, I want to say 33 or so. So since I've been here a month and a half and we have over 90 um, in that time period, I, I expect that to continue. 
Um, but it's definitely an issue and it's something that I'm prioritizing and I think you'll see an improvement going forward. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Ozzy. Thank you. Um, I want to make a quick correction. It was actually, um, it was not a murder. It was like two um, people staying at the lights. I think it was three or four in the morning on Sherman. And I believe it was Aisha on 207. And they were, they were killed by um, a car or two cars that uh, I think um, either was doing donuts or just speeding on red or something like that. One of them was taken to the Harlem hospital. The other one was taken to Allen. And I'm curious about Allen because they don't have trauma center. But I understand you can't answer that. I just wanted to correct um, my, my question. Um, in terms of uh, safety, and it's safety at related to emergencies that could happen, uh, we have an issue here on... Park Terrace East and 215th Street, they just opened the, the school, the, 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 the next, uh, I mean, like the semester just opened up. And the traffic here, it's not traffic that is moving, nothing is moving, meaning Park Terrace East from 218 all the way down to uh, 215 and uh, Park Terrace West, the traffic just stand for 20 minutes. Um, we just do not really sure how to go about it because really if, if there is an ambulance need to go by or a fire truck, they're not going to go by. And this is during uh, school dismissals or arrivals? Uh, dismissal is more serious than arrival, but it's both on both like 8 a.m. and then 3 a.m. And they start right on the dot and all the parents are double parked waiting for the kids a dismissal, but then create more pro more traffic as other cars try to go by. Um, I took videos. I think somebody's going to get hurt just by trying to cross. But my major concern, and not just myself, is the emergency, um, you know, that need to go through like fire and, and ambulances and so forth. Okay, I, I'll have to go out there and take a look myself to see what we can do to, to correct that issue. Thank uh, you. I do have two uh, youth coordinating officers who are in charge of visiting the schools and you know dealing with any issues regarding the schools. So I'll ask them to pay a visit as well, and we'll kind of come up with a solution for that. But I wasn't aware of that. But I'll, I'll take a I'll take a ride out there and, and check it out. Thank you. Last question, because I know you're gonna we don't want to over bury you with so much information, knowing that you're gonna be with us for a much longer time. Uh, count head count. How are you? How are you doing? You know, police wise, are you short? Are you how, how are you doing? Yeah, we're way short. So you know, I'm I'm happy that, like I mentioned earlier, the patrol borough and and downtown gave us additional people for uh, for the robbery issue. But we're way down in numbers with regards to the police officers. We're we're at 127 cops. Normally, you know, we have 190 to 200 cops historically in this precinct. And it's necessary because it's a pretty big precinct. I came from the 23rd precinct and we had 20 more officers there. And that's only one square mile, that whole, the whole precinct. Um, so we're way short with cops. Um, I've, I've had to, you know, give out a lot of overtime. To, sometimes I have to hold cops to kind of, to kind of fill all of the vacancies. Um, so yeah, we're way down. The borough's aware of it. Downtown's aware of it, but you know, it's tough because most commands, obviously these days are, are down in numbers. So I don't expect them to pull from, you know, say the three, two, the three, two is way down as well. And that's a very busy command as well. So it's a struggle, uh, citywide, um, but we just got to do the best we can, but definitely we're, we're definitely down in terms of numbers. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to work with you and I'm sure that the community members and the residents are very appreciative of everything that you said thus far. So, but we're going to hold you to it though. You have Nancy, who's, who's our, our watchdog. <laughs> <laughs> no, I expect you to. Thank you for having me though. No problem. Thanks. Um, moving along, I think who's, I don't know who's, who the rep for the 33rd is today. Uh, can the real McCoy step up? Do we have anyone from the 33rd? Good evening, everyone. I'm Lieutenant Garcia, the uh, Special Operations Lieutenant. Uh, you. you don't look like he managed to me. What happened? 
No, no, no. I'm not Jimenez. I'm the, uh, like I said, I'm Lieutenant Garcia, the Special Operations Lieutenant. I'm in charge of all the operations in the command overall and uh, the special teams. I'll go over the uh, crimes that we have been having in the uh, 3 3. I can happily say that we are down in crime and um, a lot better than we were doing before. For, uh, for the 28 day period, we have zero, uh, motors is zero versus one. Uh, today we have two versus one. Going into the robberies, we have 15 versus 24. Um, out of those robberies, four were involved in firearms, three were Im involved in cutting instruments, three were involved in uh, blunt objects, four was physical force, one was by threat, uh, seven of those were on the street, three are residential apartment, two commercial building, one in transit, one at ATM, and uh, one in the store. Uh, moving on to felony assaults, we have 22 versus 28. Uh, three of those involve firearms, seven involve cutting instruments, six with blowing objects, four physical force, uh, one um, involve one of those Orbeez pellets, the one that you guys have been seeing out there. One is a child in danger. Uh, seven happened in the street. Ten were residential. Two uh, involved is a chain store, one in the park, one is a bodega, and one is a uh, fast food. There has been a nine, total of nine arrests made. Uh, moving on to burglary, we have uh, five versus 11. Uh, one involved residential, uh, two commercial day. One is, a, uh, I'm sorry, three of our commercial, one is on the, during the night. Uh, two in an apartment, one is a transit facility, and uh, one is in, in a store. We have uh, two arrests for the period. Uh, moving to Grand Larceny, we have 20 versus 26. Uh, 13 were unattended property, four were identity theft, minimum. Well, uh, three were from a person. Three of those happened on the street, nine were residential, one in the doctor office, one was a drugstore, pharmacy. One in the hospital, ATM, transit, commercial building, and uh, chain store, one for each. Uh, no arrest made on that. And for the Grand Las we have nine versus six. And eight of those were, were not running vehicles. One of them is for running vehicles. We have two arrests in the period. And for the most part, um, we have seen a lot of people just leaving the car running and going into the bodega or stores and the perpetrator just come in and fix the car. So I yeah, inform everybody to not to do that. If you're going to the store or something, just always take the keys from, with you and make sure you turn off the vehicle. And that said, I mean, I won't for any questions that anybody might have. I can't hear you. Can you? So there's a question that has been on the QA for a few minutes, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, there are tons of tra traffic transit infractions on the intersection of 115th Street at Riverside on River Drive. Uh, it's an 11 lane intersection. The last infraction was a hit and run of a community member. Are there any plans to address this situation? Yes, uh, we do have our traffic uh, officers out there. Uh, we told them to focus on more of these locations where we have all these uh, pedestrian trucks or of course, and more importantly, but uh, yes, we, we do have the traffic team out there enforcing that along with the whole patrol services you know that, but of course we have to take priority to go to the 911 calls and the more priorities, but the traffic uh, team is involved here and in approaching into all those complaints. Any questions from anyone from our board members or the public? Anyone from that wants to use the QA, they don't want to speak publicly? I have a question if you are. Who has a, a hands up? Who was that? Can't Ozzy. see. It. Sorry, Ozzy. My apologies, Ozzy. Sorry, thank you. Um, again, this, um, question in terms of um, animal cruelty: Were there any um, cases founded or unfunded? Unfounded. We, for the period, we have none. When you, when you say the period, meaning it's July, yeah. August, or just August? For the 28-day period, which is... August. Oh, 28. Got it. August on. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Uh, I took a look at your CompStat numbers and uh, total numbers year to date are 713 uh, total amounts of crime in different areas, of course. But last year's was 730 to date. So what did you guys, how did you guys manage to have lower uh, numbers when the citywide is usually sky high, even 50, 100% higher than everyone else? Are you guys, I hope you're not underreporting your, the crime, right? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. I, uh, we actually give great credit to the great uh, men and women that are out there doing their, their job. I mean, we're, we're lucky that we've been down and you know, it's great work by the police officers and, that we have working all together here. And just props to the cops that are doing their job out there. Beautiful. Superintendent Miller, uh, is there anything that you would like to add? Oh, good uh, Good evening, everyone. Um, just an update from Edgecom. Can I do that quickly? Sure, let me try and finish that. Uh, my, not my colleague, I was gonna say colleague. Uh, CEO uh, Garcia from the 33rd. Well, I'm going to be sending out an invite to, to the 33rd Precinct for our, our ribbon cutting. Um, I met with the, the commander and uh, we're going to touch base where, you know, we're partners. So. Okay. We'll be Thanks. Okay, beautiful. Uh, DA Minaya, would you like to add anything? I got a promotion. I am not the DA. <laughs> Just kidding. So good evening, everyone. Um, just wanted to um, extend our uh, our regards on behalf of uh, DA Bragg. Um, wanted to certainly attend this first meeting under the auspices of uh, Mr. Bueno. Um, and just uh, remind everyone that we're here um, to support everyone. I'm here with my um, with my left hand, uh, Eli Silvestre, who is the Assistant Supervisor for Community Engagement and also my, um, my community person for Washington Heights and Edwood. And we just look forward to this new year supporting uh, public safety, CB12, and also both of our uh, precincts. So thank you, Elisa. Okay, um, Eli, you wanna say a few words? Yeah, Eli. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you, Eli, and you know, good evening, everyone. It's just nice to see so many of you again, and um, Deputy Inspector and I look forward to working with you again. Um, we miss you on the 26th, and we'll, we're very lucky to have you here at the 3-4. And as Jocelyn said, you know, Jocelyn and I work very closely together, and we're here to support CB12 and the rest of our community members in Washington Heights. Please reach out to us with any questions, concerns, and we are here to serve all of you. Thank you for having me. Jermaine? Anything awfully quiet today. That's not you. <laughs> okay, um, um, Ms. Anderson. Please. <laughs> Make me Mary. feel old when you call me Ms. Anderson. Mary. <laughs> Mary, say something. Happy to be here. Um, happy to be a part of, you know, hearing about, hearing from the, uh, the uh, precincts about their interest in uh, working and helping the issues that involve the seniors. I am the chair of the Committee for Concerns of the Aging. Um, and uh, certainly we have a lot of, of issues that happen. Um, one of the things that's been going on, of course, you know, the summer brings the parks and the people in the parks and the noise. And um, I was just gonna actually bring up an issue that I had um, when I was sitting in the park about a week, about a week ago, um, sitting in Jay Hood Wright Park um, on a Saturday mid afternoon. And all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, but it came upon being that there were um, two very loud speakers with two different parties going on. And they were really competing with, with each other to see which speaker was gonna be heard over the other one. And I called 311, um, put in the complaint and it was quickly closed out um, saying that there was an investigate that you know the, the precinct had come around, that somebody had come around and that there was no issue at that point. 
And I was sitting in between these two speakers, listening to them, and I was in full view of the entire park. I can tell you that not one officer came by in any kind of a vehicle, marked or unmarked. Um, and I'm not happy about that because what's the point of trying to make a complaint about the extreme noise? I mean, I was sitting with friends and we couldn't hear each other, uh, you know, trying to visit in the park and enjoy the afternoon ourselves. So I don't well, know. You what know. park was that, ma'am? I didn't hear the, the park. Jay Hood Wright. I know it's not your person, but. Uh, I can't say that. Um, so one of the things that the department has implemented Prior to the 25th of July, there were only a specific set of 911 calls where cops had to activate their body one cameras. But since the 25th of July, now any interaction with the public, we're required to activate our body one cameras. So that helps us monitor the response to all jobs, including 311 jobs. So that's a good tool for us as supervisors to look at the body one camera and check to see whether they actually responded to the job and how they handled it. Um, so I think I, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, you didn't get the response you wanted, but I think going forward, those types of incidents will uh, diminish, especially now that they have to document what they're doing with body, with body one camera with all jobs. This was a week ago. And I actually saved it on my phone so I can, because I'm, I'm planning, because uh, we have our um, build the block meeting. Um, on the 14th in J. Actually, it's going to be in J. Hood Wright Park, and I planned on showing that to to the NCOs at that point because you know I'm frustrated. Miss Mary Anderson, I, I apologize that this happened to you. I can definitely look into it and see if you can probably send me a message with the date and the specific, and I'll definitely look into it. Uh, that shouldn't be the case. That's something that obviously, if you're going three one one, someone should be responding and taking care of it. I'm actually in charge of the uh, 311 in the 33. Okay. I'm sure that everyone um, is on top of their game when it comes to the 311. So I can, I'm more, more than happy to look into it. If you can message me the information, I'll definitely look into it. It was actually, it's a, when it was on August 28th. All right. Well, what time was this? I'm going to tell you right now. 5.53 p.m. Sorry, it wasn't Saturday. It was Sunday. <laughs> 5.53 p.m. Okay, I'm more than happy to look into it and get back to you with that. Thank you. Good police work, Ms. Ever Rich. Now, um, anyone has any other comments to make before we call this meeting for adjournment? I have a quick question. Sure. Now that I think about it. There you um, go. There, I've been seeing in the community, there's a, a couple of like, like motorbikes or electric based bikes that drive on the actual sidewalks and it happens at all type type of hours of the day and you know that could become a little bit dangerous um because you know we have people who can be visually um impaired or audio um in our neighborhood and i was just wondering if that has been brought to the attention of our our precincts um, if there's a specific plan to address that, because I think that the bike lanes haven't really been used to their maximum um, due to, you know, certain individuals using the sidewalk as somewhere to ride these, you know, electric bikes um, and scooters um, driving through pedestrians. And I was just wondering if that has been brought up to the precinct and if, if there's a potential um, plan or or mission to uh, address that that could potentially be dangerous to our neighbors. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, we have been focusing on that. We've uh, increased our seizures of mopeds for the year. We've increased our uh, summons activity also for regarding moped, um, operating moped. Um, we'll just continue to do that. Um, Obviously, uh, what normally happens is, depending on the violation, we'll summon them and we'll take the moped. Um, if they come back and show proof of ownership, we have to give it back to them. So they will eventually get their bike back in most cases. Um, but the best we can do is obviously educate. A lot of these individuals, unfortunately, are delivery drivers. 
So we don't necessarily want to punish them while they're doing their job unnecessarily. Um, so we like to educate them and explain to them the, you know, the dangers of, of riding um, on a sidewalk with the moped. Obviously their priority at, at times is to get the uh, delivery to where it needs to be as soon as possible. So they're not necessarily thinking about traffic safety. So we try to remind them of that. And then where appropriate, we use enforcement measures to, to address it. But we'll just have to continue to monitor and stay on top of it. Thank you for that. And lastly, my other thing is, um, I know during the summertime, because now that we're finally back in session, there was an incident of a 14-year-old that was stabbed on the 145th Street, 137th Street train station. Um, ever since that came on the news, I personally haven't heard much about it. So I was wondering if our precincts have any updates about that specific situation um, as it hit really close to home to many of our of our parents. Yeah, I can look into it and get back to you because unfortunately it didn't occur in my command. Well, first fortunately it didn't occur in my command or in the 3-3, that's a little south of us. Um, I can look into it and get back to you if you'd like to get, get you an update. Obviously there's things I can uh, release to you, information I can release to you and other, other information that I cannot, but you know, I, I'm more than happy to look into it and, and get back to you on that. Follow up on it, and Jermaine, I'll let you know. Any more comments? Yeah. Any comments? Can I just give the... Uh, of course. Yeah. Sure enough. Sure enough. Good evening, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed your summer. Uh, let's not let it go. It still is summer, so still find a way to uh, relax when you can, but we know school starts. So I'm Superintendent Miller at uh, Edgecombe uh, Correctional Facility slash residential treatment facility. The correctional facility side is the side that services the work release women and the residential treatment side is now the side that services um, men returning to the community from state prison that would uh, otherwise go to the shelter system. So we started uh, the pilot uh, a month ago. We have 15 uh, individuals in there right now. Um, there's a, a stipend for individuals that find someone to live with in the community, whether it's a family member or a friend. Uh, we have one person that uh, has applied for that stipend so far. Uh, we have an agreement with DHS that will allow them to get credit uh, for being at Edgecombe. Um, and if they stay for 90 days, they'll be eligible for subsidies and um, for SROs. So in lieu of them going to the shelter system, which we are, uh, pretty much all agree is not the, the safest environment. Um, we have them in, a, in a more supportive, safe environment um, that we hope to lead to successful, successful outcomes for them. So, so far so good in the month. Uh, there's been no issues in, in the community, in the, the area. Uh, I think one individual got arrested and it was at a 145th street train station. And it was, uh, uh, I think they said for graffiti um, which he disputes, so it's yet to be adjudicated, um, but no other issues have happened uh, in the community. Um, we provide um, a VOC education counselor on site. We have uh, offender rehabilitation coordinators on site, reentry manager on site, uh, entitlement specialists, um, housing specialists, so we're helping them have a plan for uh, either how they're gonna reconnect in the community or how they're gonna um, get their own uh, place to live and uh, employment, uh, necessary programming as their conditions require. Um, so everything is going well. Uh, we're gonna be doing a ribbon cutting uh, October 3rd. Um, I, I tried to send out a, 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 an invite. We gotta have RSVPs uh, by September 19th. It's gonna be October 3rd but at uh, 10.30. Um, in the morning. I know our commissioner is going to be there. I know that um, some city representatives are going to be there. We did invite the DA's office and of course uh, the board members um, have extended an invite. So please RSVP so we know, uh, you know how many people expect. Uh, so it include obviously uh, speeches but also a tour. Uh, we did renovations in the facility um, to make it less like a, a prison setting. Um, and, you know, we've gotten good feedback from the residents that are staying there. They can see the efforts that have gone on and it, it helps them to feel a little more at ease um, seeing the environment that they're in. So, so far, everything's going well and that's uh, what I anticipate. 
Um, so I'm going to follow up with uh, the 33rd uh, in relation to that day because we'll probably want to have um, some some additional parking because we do expect uh, you know a, a lot of people may come depending on who the commissioner invites. I don't know if the governor is going to or not. So uh, we just have to be prepared and then. Um, you know, so that's to be determined at this time. Um, any questions? Yeah, thank you. Eliasar, I'm, I'm happy that you're here. I don't know if, uh, no, if there's something very important about the Edgecombe facility. They, they, there are no ACs in the individual rooms. And uh, I, 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 I know I was very vocal at the meeting that we had. It was a very, very great, um, um, it, was not, it was not really a meeting. How would you call it? Like, um, or is it a tour of the facility? Tour, tour of the facility. It was great, but I was shocked to see that we are asking individuals that just leave um, jail and back into the society to stay calm and cool in 90 and 100 degree weather. This is so wrong on so many levels, and I think that need to be changed. And the state must invest in AC individual room. Now, I know it may sound a little funny to some of you or whatever, but think about it. We're asking individuals to come back to the society and behave, and we don't give them what they need. And I'm sorry, put all of you put yourself in a room without AC and a 90 degree the weather and let's see how how it's going to work so in superintendent miller do you have any update about the acs and uh, lsr i'm i this is why i'm so happy you're here because i think that on terms of the community board we should absolutely have a resolution about that and send it to the state so <laughs> tell tell us what's the news good to, good, to, good to hear from you all it was a, it was a very uh, it was very important to have you there and to have you um, say how you felt and the uh, the uh, vice president of Odyssey House who's uh, provides services in Edgecombe was very moved by what you had to say and he experienced the same feeling as you so they actually volunteered to pay uh, for uh, air conditioning on the housing units. The only problem is that uh, they received their funding from Oasis, who's another state agency. So Oasis gives them the money and they wanted to give us the money to do the ACs. But then there's a problem because we're a state agency. So Oasis is like, why are we paying to put ACs in a state facility when you should put ACs? And then of course the state does not provide ACs in regular housing units across the state. The only places that have AC are medical um, settings and places where the building in its prior form had AC and then it was converted to a prison. So for example, Queensboro in Long Island City has AC because in its prior form that's made, it doesn't have windows, so it has ACs. But anything that they build, they don't build with ACs. Um, I, so I put in a request to uh, for the ACs trying to say that this money was offered and uh, I'm still battling. Now, what Odyssey House did do is they provided new ACs for the two center area, the program area. So all of those classrooms have new ACs. There's an AC in the uh, cell phone lounge. Um, we we had temporarily had put an AC up into one of the housing unit day rooms because there was a couple of days in August that were so hot that it, 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 it really, it, it was unbearable. Um, and luckily the heat broke. So um, I'm with you as far as that, I would welcome it. I, I have made the argument that we, that part of the facility is no longer a correctional facility. So it shouldn't be restricted by the, the rule, those rules it still remains to be seen what happens, but it's definitely on the agenda. And if you attend the, uh, you know, the ribbon cutting, the commissioner himself will be there. So, you know, you can mention that as well. And I will. All right. okay. I mean, there were good explanations, not necessarily satisfying, uh, 
especially if you know that a certain facility, and I don't want to be a uh, play you know, Judge Judy here, but you know, there is a facility that you guys beforehand would understand that there will be, you know, locational handicaps. I think that you would think before you would uh, convert it into something that it may not feasible or humane enough to. That's my little two cents. But I think it's a work in progress. Uh, we're going to work with you, though. We're not going to just bash you. We want to make sure that those rooms get some sort of cooling uh, um, instruments. Uh, Ozzy, so count on me. I'll be, I'll be the first in line advocating for that. So that, that would be... Uh... That would be welcomed. So, like I said, I appreciate you it. it, right? <laughs> sure. Can't say much. We get it. Um, so, yeah, I get it. So, um, before I call our meeting for adjournment, I'd like to uh, see how you guys felt. If you guys felt that you got enough information to go home with, is there any preoccupations? Do you feel somewhat comfortable with the way the meeting went with Mr. Uh, C.O. Castillo? Garcia, uh, Miller, Minaya, and all of you guys who had, uh, uh, who made us privileged to uh, share time with you. So, any more comments? No? I'd like to get a motion on the floor to get an adjournment. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, so, our current committee, we don't have a chair at the moment? You will. Okay. What, yes. we don't have a chair? Yes, we do. It could be you, Ozzy, so stop looking. No, I just, there was no announcement of anything, so I'm wondering what's going on. That's why I asked. Yeah, the, assignment, the assignments will go on Friday. Oh, okay. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks. Guys, get out an adjournment. Motion on the floor of an adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Jumaine, are you supposed to second it? Yeah, I agree. No, second. Second. Second.